What comes to your mind when you think of Muslims? Do you put them in a box based on biases heard from the media, your peers, or just unknown sources? As you play along this episode of Odd Man Out, think of how you pick them. Up. We brought together seven Muslims. I'm Muslim. I'm Muslima. I'm Muslim. I'm Muslim. I'm Muslim. I'm Muslim. I'm Muslim. One is a liar. If the group discovers who the liar is, they'll split a cash prize. If the liar survives, they win the entire prize. Also, there's a surprise this episode. Not that the cast is all moles, but for the first time, the prize money will decrease for each round the players continue past round two. Uh, we're, we're like the families from Pakistan. Same. Same. Wow. Yeah. From what part? Um, Karachi. Oh, Karachi. Mm -hmm. Islamabad. Yeah. yeah, I'm also Pakistani too, but yeah. I'm from Karachi as well. I mean, my family, we're just from New York, but I know that my grandfather had uh, converted to Muslim. I'm Palestinian. Oh, yeah. Um, parents born and raised there, first generation. I'm Jordanian, which is oh. next to Palestine. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. I lived in Amman for two years oh, when I was younger. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I just came from Amman like two years and a half ago. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. So <laughs> I'm new here yeah. in the States. Yeah, I'm from Bangladesh. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, Silat, my parents are from first generation as well. How did your family implement Islam growing up? Albab was asking a lot of questions and uh, she was kind of trying to get information out of the others, so I suspected that. My community growing up was in, there was a lot of um, you know, white people, mm -hmm. uh, Latino people, and I always felt like I, I was the only Muslim. No, I relate to that too because like, I mean like I'm African American, you know, so like I think it's like not expected of me to be, but growing up like that's just what I was taught, right. like from my father, from my grandfather. You know, after my father had passed away, you know, like, it made me, like, look at everything he taught yeah. me, you know. So yeah. I, I got right back into it. Yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, growing up, most of my mom's white, so it was kind of like a half culture, you know. Yeah. But I did the Sunday school thing, and I, like, finished the Quran twice, so yeah. it wasn't as, like strict Muslim. I come from a Muslim family. My mom is not strict. However, she wears hijab, mm -hmm. but she never enforced it on us. Like she always they tell us when it's the right time for you and you feel it within your heart that you want to wear hijab, then you're going to wear yeah. hijab. I was looking for like little clues and I know with like Zaina, she wore an evil eye. And like my mom taught me um, that in Islam, like the evil eye, like you're not supposed to wear that. What's it like being Muslim for us? And what's we found like right. the hardest thing? Yeah. being Muslim, right. at least maybe here. Being Muslim for me, it's funny because, you know, I'm very liberal, I guess, in a way. It's, it's hard because some people, again, just put you in a box and they're like, wait, but you're not wearing a hijab and, you know, you wear tank tops. My mom wears a hijab. I've always kind of envied that, like, she can wear her Islam, like, publicly outside. Because, yeah. like, sometimes I'll see another lady walking down the street wearing a hijab and I want to say Islam wa alaikum, but I don't want to just yeah. be, like, some random guy who she might, like, be afraid of on the street just yeah. trying to talk to her. For high school, I went to a Catholic all-guys school, so that was very different. I did oh, my when he mentioned that he went to a Catholic school, I was a bit thrown off because you would assume that they would go to a, a school based off of their religion. It was like it was a school that was close by and my mom like <laughs> wanted me to like all boys, I don't want like you with girls around uh, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um and she, for her it was just it's still like it's another religious institution that's gonna be teaching like similar values and yeah. just like morals kind of stuff. Oh, um, oh. oh no, okay. Uh, I guess, oh. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, she didn't get to really talk a lot. And again, she said she was like, you know, half white. Um, and so it, it seemed very obvious. We love you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Because I'm half white, I think it definitely made people suspicious of me because I don't look Pakistani at all. So they'd probably think that I was lying when I told them that. Okay, I think you should ask like more factual yeah, questions. Yeah. Like, yeah. Could we talk about like Ramadan for everyone? Yeah. 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 That's just like what is like fasting, what it feels like for you, what your family does. Mm -hmm. and yeah. that's it's like being around people who are not like doing it, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like... Your friends want to hang yeah, out. Like, yeah, like, bro, food, like, let's like, go get food. I'll watch you guys I'm eat. Like, yeah. 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 Like, and sometimes yeah. like watching people eat for me, it like helps. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know why I used people to work watching Food Network in Ramadan. Oh my God. Yeah, it's like a torture kind of thing to ourselves. I've heard from like my family back home too, at least like, 
it is this case in Karachi, but like what's nice is that is that in Ramadan they uh -huh. close the um, restaurants and stuff yeah. until yeah. iftar, so it makes it even easier for exactly. you to like go ahead and still practice because mm -hmm. you know sometimes you're out like go out with your friends and eat True. like not eat but like just watch them mm -hmm. yeah. and they'll be like I, I don't want to eat in front of you are you okay I'm yeah. like, yeah. I'm it's like, like bro I it's cool <laughs> yeah. the recent Ramadan like it, it was a time when I was a bit younger and um, it was when I was in high school and I was going through like a very like rebellious time yeah. mm -hmm. it was during Ramadan when I just like I had this like realization like yeah. I'm not doing the right thing right now yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and it was that time where I really yeah. like transformed the reason I was suspicious of Ayan and I feel like anytime when I'd peek around I just saw him like scanning everybody kind of looking a little fidgety someone would say something and then he'd be oh yeah me too I try to fast um, at least like three to four days out of the week um, just to kind of give myself that opportunity to do it. There was one month I did it every day. It was like the best month. Oh, I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it really is. But um, Once you get used to it, you would, you would, yeah. you would get it. it. Like I w It was hard for me when I was younger to fast all the days. No alcohol or like no pork. Do you guys like feel strongly about one thing about Islam or but like not about the others? I mean, I feel I feel very strongly um, about like not eating pork. Mm -hmm. uh, I just remember, you know, that's like something that my yeah. father really like like told me you know like yeah. like pork is swine you know so yeah. like i stay like completely away from it you know um yeah, yeah. yeah i like i've even had conversations with my mom where we'd, we'd be like if like a law came down right now and said <laughs> it's okay like i still don't think i really would eat it to me just like yeah. i just see it as gross like that's just yeah. i don't yeah, yeah. It just exactly comes yeah. Like that. Yeah. 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 For me, I also think the no alcohol thing is pretty big for me also yeah. because yeah. I learned in middle school is like the mother of all sins. So oh, yeah. I yeah, really yeah. stay away from yeah. that. Oh, oh, guys, good luck. <laughs> money will be reduced by half. I was like, dang. It felt like there was more pressure to, more pressure just to find the mole quicker and I didn't, I feel like I wanted to get into some deeper questions. Raise your hand if you're certain that the mole is still in the box and you'd like to continue the game. <laughs> okay. Might as well. <laughs> uh, like, how, on a scale of one to 10, how devout do you guys think you are? Okay, for me, um, around six years ago, I had a very bad car accident and I was almost dead. Like, I, I stayed in the hospital for three months and I have a scar in my face now, if you can see it. It was a very bad experience, however, it got me closer to Allah. Uh, a car hit us and I had to um, go through the front window. I thank God that I'm alive, that I'm healthy, that there's nothing wrong. I'd say like I'm like a five because I don't really have anyone like that's like, you know, it's not like within like my family big like that, you know, so yeah, yeah. the lessons that, that we're taught, you know what I'm saying, that's I, I embody those, maybe not all the, you know, the other things that come with it, you know. True. Can we talk about an experience where you encountered someone that was speaking down on you or whatnot? Um, for me, it was maybe I think my sophomore year of high school, I got this one sweatshirt that like had an Arabic written, uh, and Yadum, and under in English, this too shall pass. And some random kid who I didn't know, like skates up to me and says like, oh, so you're a terrorist. I was just like taken aback. I was like, excuse me. I think I was like yeah. four, 15, but that was like the, the first time for me that I really per like experienced it and was just a little like, whoa, like where does this come from? This kid looked like he was 12. He looked younger than me but he already has these ideas of like, oh, you're a terrorist just because you have like maybe some Arabic written on your sweatshirt. Almost every time I've gone to the airport, whether it was with my family or by myself, and any of us would be pulled to the side for a little random search. There is definite kind of prejudice involved in that, I believe. Uh, I, I can go. Um, it was basically in like, it was in middle school and um, we were in PE class and a, a kid goes up to me and I, because he heard my last name. Mm -hmm. uh, and, this is going to uh, yeah, He just like, he called me, he called me a terrorist and I completely lost myself and mm -hmm. Started cursing at him, mm -hmm. but then afterwards I had this whole realization like, that's not what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Alright, so this has happened for the first time. There is a five way tie. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So each person will be asked one question by any other participant. Uh, why were you put into a Catholic school? Uh, Honestly, it was three minutes from our house. Uh, my, my parents wanted a school that uh, would teach similar values. Are you a Muslim? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, Wallahi, I'm Muslim. <laughs> like, what's the biggest thing to you that means that you're Muslim? So I was hijabi in high school, but then when I entered like UCLA, I took off my scarf. But I think that because of this, I actually grew closer to Islam. Would you mind listing all five prayers and like when in the day that they happen? 
thing. Well, I don't know why I'm <laughs> on the spot right now. <laughs> so uh, but you know, it's uh, it's um, crap. It's like morning. You know, I watch my dad do it a lot. You know? uh, what was like the point that really like that turned you to you know find a lot a bit more? I guess. Oh yeah, I mean like I was just like partying a lot, oh, like, yeah. doing a lot of like just bad things. Like and um, my whole family is really religious, so. I'm from Bangladesh, like, you, you won't meet a Bengali that's not Muslim, not Muslim mm. you know? Uh, where, how can you be exempt from fasting? Do you know? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, if you are uh, very sick and you are uh, under medication and it's threatening your life, you should not fast, uh, especially for elder people. Like my gut instinct was Zayna, and so I wish I would said if it's too well, it's got to be her. She fit the character very well, but the reason why I didn't go further with it was because I had met Muslims who were like her. No, but I really want to tell you the truth. I know a lot of Quran. I've studied Quran. Were you raised up in another religion? Or are you ex-Muslim? No, 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 no. I'm I'm Christian. That's oh what I thought because it's but but I want to but but we are only two percent out of the population yeah. in Jordan. We're very yeah. very like yeah. few. Uh, <laughs> I want this every day. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I did it. It was kind of I felt bad because they're all nice because I know I'm a liar, and they're all super sweet. You know I'm I'm not as knowledgeable and I'm I'm not. I have tattoos, you know, I don't follow necessarily the guidelines, I'm not strict with it. You know, I just know that it's a personal relationship. We all have our own, like, ways we practice and we understand that just because somebody practices it a little bit less or a little bit more doesn't make them any more of a Muslim than the other person. Hi, my name is Ragni Basin and I directed this episode of Odd Man Out. And if you'd like to play along in the next episode, you can go to our Instagram page and vote for who you think the mole is. Until next time. There's one myth that I don't, it didn't come from my teacher, it came from a lot of seventh graders for some reason. And they're like, oh, people get in trouble for kissing in the halls. I'm like, jeez. I am a middle schooler. I'm a middle schooler. I am a middle schooler. I'm a middle schooler. I'm a middle schooler. I'm a middle schooler. I'm a middle schooler. One is a fifth grader.